Do we learn that from our parents? Yes, we do learn that from our parents. And in fact, uh, people often internalize the voice of their parents. So if you have a parent who's very caring or very loving, people will often say to themselves, when I feel bad, I can hear the voice of my mom or whatever, or my dad or whatever speaking to me. We use these internal voices. But if you look at people who struggle with this emotional warm quality of inner thinking, you know, being kind to them, so feel kindness, you know. They often say, no, I don't ever really remember my mom being that kind. I mean, if I did bad things, they would just hit me or something. Um, so, uh, so they haven't actually internalized that warmth. The other interesting thing is we often find, and again, I think this is something new in our society, actually, is that when children are told off or hit even, threatened and hit, they're often sent to their room. Now, I grew up in Africa, and I can tell you, in the outback, when kids were bad, their mother would give them a backhander, and they'd immediately run off to grandmother or aunt or uncle, whoever they thought was going to be nicest to them. You would then pick them up and say, so have you been upsetting mom again? The idea of being isolated at the point that you've been threatened would just not occur. But in our society, we increasingly do that. We isolate people at the point at which they are most upset. And so I think that's another reason why this soothing system doesn't quite work properly. Because when you're upset, what you need is your parent to calm you down. And then you internalize that upset, kindness, calm down. Great, okay. But if you don't get that upset, what do I do? What advice would you give uh, parents in terms of how to teach their children to reduce their own criticism or, or increase their compassion? Yeah, I think per personally noticing it and noticing that quite a lot of it, I mean it can come from the family of course if you grow up in a critical environment, but also quite a lot of it comes in school and it's not necessarily direct but it can come through teasing and bullying so uh, we know that bullying for young girls can be horrendous and sometimes, sadly, they become very depressed, even suicidal. So it's really about parents being alert to uh, these things. The slight problem with the for the parent is, and, is that they, even if they love their child very deeply, okay, it's the peer group that's important. So the mother can say, oh, look, you know, you don't need to be critical of yourself and this and that. But because it's mum, it's not the same as from your peer group. So the best thing really is just to not try and overly reassure the ch your children, but listen to them, uh, empathise and validate their difficulties in, in, uh, or their disappointments in themselves or whatever it is, and then gradually, gradually try and help them to think about, well, look, you know, if you were speaking to a friend and this is how you would treat it. If you can develop a warm voice, this will help you get it through it. And So be keen, but not overly reassuring, because uh, children, particularly adolescents, will dismiss it. Yeah, Mum, I know you love me, but it's not about that. You know? <laughs> and the other thing is that some children who are quite perfectionistic, uh, work pressures uh, can lead them to be very critical, and they become very anxious about failing and not doing very well at school. And again, I think parents can take those things quite seriously, understand the anxieties rather than trying to sort of uh, brush them away. Um, because, I, you know, you, you're wanting to do the best you can for your child, you're wanting to reassure them and take their upset and their criticism away. But sometimes the best thing is to listen to it and talk to them about it and try and understand how they are feeling and why they're feeling what they're feeling. Just to feel heard can be really quite helpful. And and presumably it's it's important for the parents to to also model a, a sense of compassion for for themselves when they run into difficulties. Yes, that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Modeling uh, is very very helpful, um, very much so. So it's so it's about how the um, the parent themselves actually deals with obstacles and difficulties and hurt yes. in their own life, and then yes. then when they deal with it in yes. in a in a compassionate way, yes. then their children will pick that up. Yes, always keeping in mind that there's always two problems. There's the thing in itself, like your tax. You mentioned not paying the tax. That's upsetting. So okay. that is the that's the event in itself, right? But then how you treat yourself 
is the second problem mm. and you don't want a double whammy so yeah by all means get upset about the situation that's understandable but then stand back from it think about how you can deal with that situation try and put yourself in a state of mind of imagining yourself to be at your very best your most calmest and confident how you'd like to be with a friend so to create that mind state as best you can and there are ways in which you can train in that um, and then solve it because if you're just going for self attacking and beating yourself up it's things get very difficult then yeah presumably you're actually digging yourself more of a hole yeah well you're so just stimulating your threat system your stress yeah. system and then there's no there's no help from the outside there's no help from the inside it's like a pincher movement everyone's attacking you from the outside from the inside yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. it feels pretty lonely horrible place yeah so it's it's not surprising that people actually feel helpless when oh, they get when they get into so. that yeah, into very that much kind so. of state very much so very much so yeah where do you uh see the the compassionate uh mind um ideas fitting into the uh the broad area of positive psychology Yes, well, positive psychology is an interesting uh, uh, approach to come over from America, but basically the idea is that it's not just about helping people with some of the negative things, their anxieties, their angers and so forth. It's also about building positives, working on what a person called Martin Seligman calls strengths and virtues. Okay, so... Uh, for example, using a compassion focus, it's not just about getting rid of anxiety or anger. In fact, sometimes it's, it's, it's difficult to do that. It's about refocusing on certain strengths, your own inner wisdom, that actually you know how best to get through this by being kind. That's how you would treat a friend. It's pulling on your own inner wisdom. So positive psychology is very much about helping people focus on the things that they might not be attending to in themselves, but it, they're there if they learn to focus on it. So uh, compassion is one of those processes. It's a particular kind of emotion. The, your positive feelings are of two basic types. Actually, more than two, but we'll go with two. One is a system which utilizes dopamine primarily, not completely. And this is a system which gives you pleasure and excitement and joy. So if you win the lottery tonight, Alistair, <laughs> okay, you will have uh, an excitement buzz and uh, you will have racing thoughts. You probably won't be able to sleep. In fact, you'll have a very mild hypermania because when very good things happen to you, you get this buzz of dopamine. Now, a lot of people try and create good things so they can have a buzz of dopamine, going out with friends, doing achieving things and so on, playing sport or whatever it is because they're wanting to get these little buzzes of dopamine. So this kind of positive emotion is very activating. And there's quite a lot of, well, there has been quite a lot of focus in psychology, positive psychology, on achievement and optimism and doing. However, there's another type of positive emotion, which is a calming emotion. It uses more of the endorphin system. And this one gives you a sense of peaceful well-being. It's not this activating pleasure, exciting having fun, going to parties, that kind of thing, passing exams, all that stuff. This is a calm sense of well-being. And people who meditate, uh, practice mindfulness, they have this calmer sense of positive well-being. They have high states of alertness. It's not about how alert. It's not about going to sleep. It's a different type of positive emotion. Now, this type of positive emotion also is linked to affiliation. Okay, so that if you're distressed, right if someone's kind to you it calms you down it put moves you back to a state of peaceful well-being if they try and just excite you <laughs> it doesn't kind of work really i mean it can distract you perhaps if you're a child but it doesn't so generating high positive emotion in the dopamine system often doesn't help with the threat system generating positive emotion that, that's doing this does right now, of course, there are times when you want to jump out of aircraft and you want to have both excitement and a bit of fear because they, you know, work off each other. But generally speaking, thinking about the positive emotions that are associated with contentment, peaceful well-being, a sense of slowing, a sense of being centered in the self, those are different types of positive emotions to this achieving, doing, you know, having fun. I mean, they're fine, but they not emotions that are going to sustain you, not going to give you fulfillment in life or meaning in life. They're just going to give you buzzes of pleasure from time to time. 